Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks bringing you your daily Tesla report for Monday, March 6, 2023. Before I jump into all the charts, I just want to encourage you to please click like if you would each and every time. Subscribe to the Wicked Stocks YouTube channel. Please share the content if you would with friends and colleagues and check out wickedstocks.com where we offer daily triple Q, daily spy analysis, just like you see in Apple and Tesla on our Wicked Stocks YouTube channel. We also do weekly S&P 500, weekly NASDAQ, 100 and weekly TLT that is the long bond ETF which I'll be showing in just a moment here one of those charts uh, also we do two individual stock picks every week all of which comes in a complete subscription package that you never see on our YouTube channel so check us out uh, you won't regret it here we go with the Tesla analysis weekly bar chart here uh, this is the big picture we'll work our way into the day itself as usual in january we came off of this targeted channel support that is now in the 74 73 to 86 43 region we are expecting the 244 channel top resistance as a two to three month target this following a settlement about six weeks ago above this intermediate channel structure that's presently well below the market in the 148.91 to 157.02 region this is a weekly bar chart the daily bar chart will show slightly different numbers later in this video presentation. Now, we still are expecting 244 as a two to three month target, and we're about halfway through that time horizon, six weeks into it, and we can still reach 244 even within that two to three month time frame. In, in other words, over the next six weeks. So let's take a look at the near term chart here. And I do want to talk about this channel bottom that we settled clearly below last Thursday. Uh, it it actually held pretty nicely early in the morning on Friday, but we pushed through it uh, and then we backed off and we closed just above it. And I mean just above it. I do think it's inconclusive as to whether this is a rejection of a meaningful sell signal into the lower 150s or whether it means uh, you know, we should continue higher now because we closed at 197.79. This structure is at 197.83. A mere unchanged opening on Monday will be below this level. And so that's how close it is. In other words, I think this deserves another day to flesh out. If you went short late last week based on this signal and you stayed short over the weekend, you don't have a strong argument from me. Inversely, if you exited that short position, um, you also don't have a strong argument from me. Even if you went long, uh, I can't really argue it. Uh, although I do want to see a little bit more upside uh, before it becomes clear that we rejected this sell signal. So I'm still going with the concept of the sell signal. It's easier right now. Obviously, I have the chart here in front of me. And if we open below 197.83, you should respect the possibility for 190.90 within the day. 190.90 is the low settlement price last Thursday. It is the lowest settlement price this market has put out since that February high. We can bottom out there on an intraday, possibly daily basis. If we break 190.90, the uh, channel bottom that we tested on Thursday at 184.44 today is in reach. This structure is still able to contain session weakness. I have it as session containment. By the way, I am coming up with a glossary of terms for those of you who are new to my analysis and you want to understand it thoroughly. It will be free on wickedstocks.com. It should be out in the next couple of weeks where I mentioned little things like session containment. That means basically daily containment. This comes from you know my trading floor days at the Board of Trade back in the late 80s and through the mid 90s where we talked about the session, the trading session. And that's still a common word that is used. Many people don't know what does session mean. It's an old habit of mine. I could easily replace session with daily, just so you know. But anyway, back to the analysis. If we break 190.90, 184.44 in reach where we can bottom out for the day, Hi, if you enjoy watching our daily Tesla report, you'll love our daily Triple Q and SPY reports. They're presented in the same 5-10 to 10 minute video format. Our daily SPY and Triple Q analysis provides directional market signals that are correlated with highly specific price support and resistance levels. Whether your trading time horizon is short or longer term, we promise you a distinctive edge in your trading of the SPY and Triple Q. We offer a 5-day, no questions asked, money back guarantee. So go to wickedstocks.com right now and start receiving your daily spy and daily triple Q reports today. 
possibly into later week, but I will say that if we close lower on the day and below this 197.83 formation, you should respect this market's ability to continue south over the next couple of weeks into the 150s. And I'll say that if, surprise, we were to close today below 184.44, which I think is a long shot, but if over the next few days we do, then we're probably three to five days away from testing this 157.70 uh, rising two-third speed line, which, you know, I cannot call an objective, a clear-cut objective right now because of Friday's settlement pretty much right at this line. So there's, you know, the jury is out in terms of trend direction, probable trend direction as we move into later March. Will it go down? Will it go up from here? If we close a little higher in the day, emphasis will be up. If we close a little lower today, emphasis will be down. So we're sort of in this kind of a holding pattern right now based on Friday's settlement right at this line study. But you know, if we close lower on the day, the 150s in reach over the next couple of weeks, that 157.70 rising two-thirds speed line converging presently with this band of long-term support that I said we settled above six weeks ago. And if we test it again here over the next few weeks, it can absorb selling through April, even the balance of Q2, and we can turn up again from here. Here's a level that we were, be, we're going to be watching again, uh, pop, perhaps if we close today, I'm talking 221 and a quarter here, that long-term 38 Fibonacci. You know, if we close today back above the 197.83 formation, that 221 and a quarter region is in reach by the end of next week or sooner. And perhaps this 245.63, still two to three month downside objective in reach over the next, I don't know, two to three, three to five weeks. It's a little different on the daily chart, a 245.63. And this is that 3.8 Fibonacci. We rallied to 217.65 a few weeks ago and backed off pretty close to the 221 and a quarter 3.8 Fibonacci uh, level. Let me get back to uh, the upside today. And that is to say that 197.83 is sort of our pivot point, not only for the day, but even through the rest of the week. And you could make a case into later March, as I've already been saying. But if we clearly open above 197.83, we can test, um, this should be 207.38. I'll assume that you can make that change. It's actually properly typed out here. I have it mislabeled as 107.38. It's 207.38. So if we push or open today above 197.83, 207.38 is in reach. All the minor points on the way up are carefully chosen. There's some variation of a Fibonacci upside retracement or some such other line study perhaps that is a valid level that aggressive day traders can make ample use of. But if we open above 197.83, we can continue up to 207.38 intraday where a daily high can be made. And if we don't back off then, and if we close clearly above 197.83, uh, you know though then that uh, I do think that the 221 and a quarter area, that longer term Fibonacci would be in reach by the end of next week. We could top out there for a week, maybe longer. 245.63 remains a two to three month target. We're six weeks into it. There's plenty of time left to reach this upper area. And if we close clearly today above 197.83, that sort of makes that case. Uh, I will say along lines of this channel top, once again, if we close today above 207.38, then we should, within the week, retest. I say retest because it came very close to reaching that 221 and a quarter, three eighths of three weeks ago. We should test within a few days to 221 and a quarter, three eighths Fibonacci if we settle today above 207.38. We could top out for the week itself at 221 and a quarter. You can see this here. If we happen to close above 207.38, our next intraday resistance is 214.24. But really within a few days, we should reach 221 and a quarter where we can top out on a weekly basis. And it would be a settlement above 221 and a quarter that would tell me that we're probably a week or two away from reaching our overall objective at 205, 245 rather, 63. 245, 63 is once again on the weekly chart, 244 even. This is gonna be a big test for Tesla. Assuming we test it over the next few weeks, next six weeks, it could contain buying on a quarterly basis, Possibly in a later year, we could fall off. And if we close above it, that would be a meaningful long-term buy signal for this stock as we move into later year. 
I need to, to think about whether I need to talk about anything else with respect to the day itself. We've got 184.44, the channel top is 207.38, 197.83 is our, our pivot point for the week and into later March. And once again, that Settlement Friday, I'm gonna call inconclusive with respect to the a trend dynamic. Will we continue higher if we close higher on the day? Will we continue lower if we close lower on the day? It's pretty much that simple. Um, yeah, I don't really think there's anything else to say. Please click like and subscribe. Check us out on wicketstocks.com. Of course, we will be back tomorrow with Tuesday's Tesla Report. You have a great day.